Hello everyone. So in today's video, I'll be talking about the interview questions related to Infosys interview. One of my students recently gave interview for Infosys and total experience was 2.5 years. And the intention of this video is to make you prepare for the overall difficulty level of the interview. Obviously in Salesforce interview keeps on changing depending on the interview to interviewer. But if you are aware about the overall difficulty level, uh, then you it will it will ultimately help you so with that intention let's start the video okay so the after the introduction and everything the first question was to write a trigger and scenario was uh, kind of straightforward the scenario was that let's say you have an email field on account every time you update the email field that email field should also get updated on all the associated contacts Okay, so this is a pretty straightforward, easy scenario from where you on, on which you have to update the contacts related to the opportunity. So it will be the after context because you need to update the uh, related object and make sure you do not overspend time on it. Like like, do not spend more than 10, 12 minutes on it because that because it's an easy scenario. Try to bulkify it and whenever you write a trigger, make sure you keep on communicating with the interviewer, you know, give him the overall now uh, approach you have in your mind for this and start writing the trigger and keep on talking to interviewer in between if you are doing something try to explain that thing to interviewer why you are doing this let's say you're doing a null check then try to explain why you are doing null check what advantage it could bring to the overall code and if interviewer is giving you any direction let's say let's say you're using map and he wants you to use aggregate query or wrapper class listen to interviewer okay because sometimes when interviewer tells you gives you a hint it is mostly about to correct you okay so that was the first question and then there was a question uh, that you have recently done a deployment and now one of the user is not able to see the data what could be the issue you've got a production bug that let's say a user xyz is not able to see the data and you have to solve it okay so this is an open-ended question this question and the type of question requires couple of cross questions like if this user is only not able to see the data or other users in the same profile are not able to see the data what data user is not able to see based on the cross questioning you can you know reach up to the conclusion whether it is an object level issue or it's a record level issue based on you can see if there is a gap in profile or if you need to provide permission on profile or provide a permission set or there is a sharing rule or anything which you missed you know in the deployment so <clears throat> first you will try to identify if you are not able to you can also try to use the login as option and try to see if the user is not able to i mean you are also not able to see the data try to identify the issue uh, sometimes you replicate those scenarios in the lower environment and see if the user is able to see that data in the full copy sandbox or not so it's an open ended question interviewer has asked this question because he wants to see your overall approach for the questions like this okay there is no right answer or wrong answer or the you know only answer there are, there could be multiple answers okay if everything is fine still you're not able to or your user is not able to see the data even after checking the debug log and everything then you will raise a case with the sales force and try to identify what could be the issue but most of the time you'll be able to find out the root cause by checking the object level field level things maybe a permission is missing maybe the field has not uh, you know read permission and everything so try to uh, tell all the approaches you have on your mind when you get a question like this okay then there was a question related to can we upload the null value uh, on a particular record via data loader okay so sometimes we just need to understand why interview is asking a particular question okay the intention behind this question is there is a checkbox in the data loader which allows you to upload the null values as well if that is unchecked then you will not be able to upload the null values if that is checked then you will be able to so he just want to understand if you know about that checkbox or not so okay you you can check that thing okay uh, see overall interview was a bit easy in my opinion but then it was 2.5 years of experience only uh, okay there was one question related to the changes in the production so there was a question is it okay to make changes directly in production uh, uh, what could be what what is your opinion about that okay so the questions like this again obviously it is not a good idea to make changes on the production unless it is a predefined post deployment step let's say you have a custom label on which you are passing a record id or an object id 
or id which keeps on varying from sandbox to sandbox and to production so in that case you will have to uh, you will have to basically uh, do that you know you need to copy paste the ids and everything so you will basically uh, use that and change directly in the production okay but you will not be changing anything related to let's say flows or you you should not be changing directly in the production so it is not a very good idea to change anything in directly in production most of the time so uh, you know developers do not even get the access of production if you are working in a service based environment so always remember it is not a good idea but it is also conditional depending on what you are trying to change so it is a good idea to ask like what change you are talking about so if it is related to uh, any uh, flows or activating or deactivating uh, deactivating something is fine but then it depends on company to company as well what rules you have set for your uh, users okay all right then there is a question uh, related to lightning web component what is the api decorator and track decorator tell me the real time use case when you have used the track decorator in your in your project when you have used the api decorator so from the question itself it is pretty evident that the interviewer is not looking for the theoretical answer he is looking for the practical exposure you have so you you try to tell this with the help of an example any real time use case where you have passed something from parent to child with the help of api decorator or where you have used track decorator on on an object or on an array and then used that value in a getter or displayed that thing in the ui and keep on tracking those things so why he want to ask is because he wants to see if you have worked practically on this thing or not so if you give one theoretical answer even if that answer is correct he'll not be satisfied because he is expecting a practical explanation of that thing keep that in mind that you have to answer from the interviewer's point of view and sometimes it is important to understand why interviewer is asking a particular question okay so try to give examples in question like this okay then there was a question uh, can we throw error message just for for the insert scenario not for the update scenario so yes obviously we can throw the error for the insert scenario there are multiple ways to throw error it depends on what we are doing if it is just about throwing error we can use validation rule and we can use is new uh, function to check if it is a newly created record and then error conditions if it is also about doing something let's say on insert of account we have to do couple of more things and if let's say there is a criteria which is not matching then throw error if it is matching then let's say do update and all then you can use before triggers and before save flows as well before save flows is also a uh, option now because we can throw custom errors from it now so depending on what they want to do try to uh, give all the alternative options available and then help him choose which is the better option uh, depending on what scenario we are trying to okay if you will try to uh, give all the options and then choose the best option then that will make the maximum impact and you will get the maximum marks out of that question okay so be be very uh, you know mindful about uh, uh, giving all the options it is not a yes or no question because if you say yes even though your answer is correct you will not be able to bring the maximum value out of that question okay uh, then there was a question a user is not able to see a field on the page layout in the production what will you do as an administrator okay see if when a user is not able to see a field there could be multiple possibility there could be a possibility that field is not available in the page layout there could be a possibility that user does not have uh, read access on that particular field there could be possibility that you have restricted access to that user for that particular field so you have to do couple of probing questions to find out if other users are able to see that field on the same page layout if yes then this is not a layout level issue then this could be a fls related issue then you will go in the other direction so keep on asking cross questions to get more clarity about questions okay sometimes interviewers give you open questions so that you uh, in, you know in order to reach to the depth of that question you have to ask a lot of cross questions if you will not ask and just answer a question your answer will not be complete okay or you know interviewer might not be satisfied with your answers all right <clears throat> then there was a question about what is asynchronous apex tell me the real time use case where you have used asynchronous apex in your project okay 
here also it is very evident that he is looking for the explanation from the real time project point of view not from the theoretical point of view he is not looking you to explain the definition of future method cubal epics or or batch epics he wants to understand whether you have written actually a batch epics in your project whether you have written future method what was the scenario when you considered writing future method why it was not possible to be done by the normal epics why you needed to create a batch epics for this so try to explain it even with just example you can you can explain it uh, with the help of one batch example you have written in your project if you have 2.5 years of experience then it is expected that you must have written at least one batch epic scenario so try to explain that batch epic scenario why you use batch uh, try to de you know decode it in a way that you wrote batch epics why you wrote batch epics what advantage was it building was it scheduled or not and then if he is ex expecting more explanation then you can go on to talking about future method cubable epics and other things as well and if he has any cross questions he will himself ask all right so the the very common thing in almost every question is that if you have a normal practical example for every scenario even though that is easy that is fine you should be able to explain that scenario well all right then there was a question about communication parent to child and child to parent how to communicate from parent to child and how to communicate from child to parent give them all the options available how different ways you can communicate and uh, try to uh, try to explain uh, the child to parent communication more because that is a bit tricky you have to write a custom event and then need to come uh, communicate via the bubbles and captures and everything so try to explain as much as you can all right so these were the couple of basic questions and then there was a couple of easier questions as well like straightforward questions so i did not cover those straightforward questions but uh, my intention from this video is to make sure that you understand the overall complexity level of this company they are hiring a lot i mean uh, most of my students keep on getting mails almost on daily basis for Infosys so they are hiring a lot and the difficulty level of Infosys is almost equivalent to of Cognizant, Cape Gemini, um, TCS, um, uh, sometimes IBM, Accenture so more or less they ask similar difficulty level questions so make sure you prepare them well I'll try to put all these questions and answer in the description box and do let me know if you have any questions or uh, you know if you want me to cover any other questions as well thank you